Today we are going to talk about non-Mendelian genetics. Non-Mendelian genetics are the patterns of inheritance that do not follow the Mendelian laws, namely law of segregation, law of independent assortment, and law of dominance. Non-Mendelian inheritance will produce offsprings with different phenotypes as compared to the parents. Unique phenotypic expression in offsprings is largely due to chromosome linkage, multiple alleles responsible for a single phenotype. Lastly, dominance in this inheritance may not necessarily mask the expression of a recessive allele. Non-Mendelian inheritance patterns include incomplete dominance, codominance, polygenic inheritance, and linked alleles. First, let's start with an example on incomplete dominance. In this example of incomplete dominance, we have red flower as the dominant trait and white flower as the recessive trait. This cross produced a pink flower, a unique phenotype that is somehow in between red and white. If we follow the Mendelian laws, a heterozygous genotype would ultimately express the dominant trait, red. However, this is not the case in this example. This pattern of inheritance is called as incomplete dominance, wherein a heterozygous genotype is expressed as a median trait between the parents. As shown here, we have the homozygous dominant genotype having red flowers, a homozygous recessive genotype with white flowers, and a heterozygous genotype representing pink flowers. Here are some examples of incomplete dominance. To the left, we have here a Punnett square for carnations and snapdragons. These are kinds of ornamental flowers. You can also see here that alleles are written differently. They are written as superscripts. And these alleles are also represented by different letters. R for red phenotype, W for white phenotype, and RW for pink phenotype. Nonetheless, this still shows a homozygous allele combination having similar superscripts and heterozygous allele combination having different superscripts. So in this example, we cross here pink snapdragons having RW genotypes. And this ultimately produces different phenotypes, namely 25% red phenotype, 25% white phenotype, and 50% pink phenotype. To the right, we have another example on human hair. Alleles here are also in different letters. SS for straight hair, CC for curly hair. Even though the genotype appears as both homozygous, it will ultimately produce heterozygous offspring, having the SC genotype, and this would produce a phenotype expression that is in between the parents, which is the wavy hair. The next non-Mendelian inheritance is co-dominance. In contrast with incomplete dominance, traits from parents appear as both present and not only as an intermediate. The Punnett square shown here has similar parents with our earlier example, but it produced an offspring with a combination of red and white flowers. Again, if we follow Mendelian genetics, offspring should all be red. If we follow incomplete dominance, offsprings should be pink. Genotypes here may also be represented by different letters. Presence of both alleles in the combination would also correspond to phenotypic expression of both alleles, thus co-dominance. Here are some examples of co-dominance. Crossing a white cow and a red cow or a brown cow in this case will produce a spotted offspring or also called as a roan. This inheritance is also similar in crossing chickens. Zebras, on the other hand, are in combination of white and black. Another example of co-dominance is the inheritance of blood type. As we all know, blood type corresponds to antigens present on a cell. Antigen A would be present to blood type A, antigen B 
to type B, and antigens AB to type AB. Thus, this type AB is an actual example of codominance, having A and B alleles as both dominant. Type O, on the other hand, do not have any antigens. So type O in this example is considered as a recessive trait. So here, you will see a Punnett square on the inheritance of blood type. And you will also see that the genotypes are written in superscript, superscript to the heme protein Hb hemoglobin. Application of codominance is notable in the inheritance of sickle cell anemia. Sickle cell anemia is a condition wherein blood cells are shaped irregularly, like a sickle. This shape decreases the capacity of the cell in carrying oxygen and transporting it to different tissues. An individual carrying a sickle cell allele is represented by a superscript S, is considered as a carrier while an individual which has two or homozygous sickle cell alleles will ultimately manifest the disease. Codominance is the pattern of inheritance because it both expresses the blood type and being a carrier of sickle cell anemia. Thus, gene frequency of the SCD is most prevalent in blood type O, which is a recessive blood type, and least prevalent to blood type a, B. Another non-Mendelian inheritance or pattern of inheritance is the polygenic inheritance. Polygenic inheritance is the inheritance of a phenotypic trait that depend on multiple genes acting and reacting simultaneously. So we have here a tri-hybrid cross for skin complexion. As seen here, we have the participation of three genes, namely A, B, and C. These three genes will produce these specific phenotypes or different shades of skin complexion. We also have as an example, eye color, and another example would be the height. So in polygenic inheritance, we must note that phenotypic traits do not follow Mendelian genetics because it is simply not affected by dominance nor recessiveness. It is more on a concentration manner or the concentration of the alleles present in a specific gene or alleles present in specific offspring. Another example would be this one, eye color. So as you can see here, eye color is represented to the left side with a dihybrid cross having a, the genes A and B and producing different types of physical traits in the eyes. We can also have this represented by making a pedigree chart such as this one. The last non-Mendelian inheritance we will discuss today is the linked alleles. Genetic linkage is the tendency of the DNA sequences that are close together on a chromosome to be inherited together during meiosis. In other words, two genetic markers that are very close with each other are unlikely to be separated onto different chromatids. Therefore, they are said to be more linked. An example for this is the inheritance of eye colors in a generation of Drosophila melanogaster or fruit fly. Crossing a white-eyed fly, female, and a red-eyed fly, male, will most likely produce red-eyed female offsprings and white-eyed male offsprings. Hemophilia is another example in linked alleles, or more specifically, sex-linked alleles. Hemophilia is a medical condition wherein the affected individual has an impaired blood clotting. So again, hemophilia is linked with a phenotypic expression with the males, and the females would only act as carriers. So an example is this one. 
So the first cross that we have here has a father that has hemophilia and a mother that has normal or a healthy mother. So when we have the offsprings, of the said parents, there is a high chance and probability that the daughters will be both carriers of the hemophilia allele. So when the daughter marries a man without hemophilia, there is still a possibility of the phenotypic expression of hemophilia disease to their son. So the son can have hemophilia and a daughter can also carry the hemophilia gene and the cycle would repeat. This type of inheritance was closely examined in a European royal family and you can read more on that on this type of journal. So the inheritance of hemophilia is highly observable in the previous pedigree analysis of a European royal house.